Hi, everybody. My name is Gwendolyn Bork. I'm the president of Focus for our community unity and support with the Lancaster Depew Addiction Prevention Coalition. And today I have Missy Stolfi uh, on the line today. She's the area director of the Western and Central New York chapters for the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. Missy, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Gwen. I'm glad to be here. So um, we know that suicide prevention is, is a huge uh, topic of discussion right now. We have a, a very escalating and, and pending problem right now amongst our youth. It's skyrocketing in since this whole COVID thing started. So, you know, just tell us a little bit about your organization and, and the services and resources that you offer, please. Sure, thank you. And I uh, appreciate the opportunity as well to, to speak with the community today. Um, I represent the organization, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, and we are a national organization made up of chapters in all 50 states. And so we're able to offer um, a lot of, you know, knowledge and resources and support, um, you know, and in particular here speaking in the greater Erie County, Buffalo area. Um, the work of AFSP um, really stems from our heritage as a research organization. So we began in 1987 as a research focus organization when really very few people were studying this um, health topic. And this was becoming a health crisis, but no one um, was really talking openly um, about the people we were losing, um, nor did we really understand why. Um, and that's really where everything came from is, is wanting to know why and understand the complexities of suicide as a health issue. And to then with that, you know, really help educate the community and change the culture around both mental health and suicide. Um, and from there, we were able to also develop our prevention education programs and materials. Um, we started engaging in advocacy efforts um, at the state and federal levels to really impact those decision makers and those who, you know, carry the purse strings to um, make sure that, you know, um, at those types of really important levels um, that we are reducing, um, you know, the barriers that exist um, when it comes to mental health and of course, suicide prevention specifically. And we also engage in loss and healing uh, programs to offer support uh, to those who have been impacted by suicide. And so we're able to offer a number of, um, of programs to help really get um, people who are survivors of suicide loss uh, connected to one another and really help in their, their healing process. And yeah, you know, just to stop you right there, when, you know, we first started talking and you, you've been, uh, you know, a partner of ours, you know, even since last year at our, at our other health and wellness fair that we had at the Depew schools and so having your partnership is valuable to us and, and we look forward to an even stronger partnership in the future, but you, your mission was very simple and it, it's to save lives and spread hope. So I love how, you know, you can take all that you do and really break it down to four words. So um, just wanted everybody to know that save lives and spread hope. So go ahead, Missy, keep going. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, um, you know, we, we're really, you know, I am, you know, a staff person, but we're really driven, um, by grassroots efforts, a very voluntary based um, organization that makes our work possible. Um, and that's something that's really incredible too, is the way um, this work and this mission brings people together um, in a very public way about a really difficult topic that for too long has stayed in the shadows. We didn't talk about it. Um, we It was very hush hush. And with that, it perpetuated stigmas. It perpetuated guilt and shame and burden. And also it perpetuates misunderstanding around suicide and mental health overall. Um, and so that's why even our community fundraising walks that support our efforts are called Out of the Darkness because it's about how are we going to bring these various issues that impact so many out of the darkness and so that we can talk more openly, clearly um, about it so we can help people get support and to heal. Um, and so that's something that's really been amazing too. Like you said, it's a really simple mission um, and that once you start talking, it really invites others to be able to say it's okay, um, you know, to talk about these things and to, um, you know, find that you're not alone in dealing with them. You know, it seems that, um, you know, our, our if, if people are wondering the similarities between, you know, an addiction prevention coalition and really what you're doing, we, we talk about this war as like dual diagnosis, you know, there's people that have, you know, mental illnesses that are self-medicating with, with um, addiction type substance use issues. And so having uh, this partnership is going to be, I think, a, a valuable resource to our community. But, you know, go move forward, I think, a little bit on that. Like if someone is struggling, you know, I, I, 
I mentioned, you know, it's like two pathways. As a child, you are struggling with something, trauma, there's PTSD, there's symptoms that are happening, things that are going on and it's causing depression or anxiety or, um, you know, there's, there's all of these things that happen that could contribute to either one, going the addiction route and self-medicating or just not wanting to live anymore. And it, it surprises a lot of parents sometimes like in the community, oh my gosh, that kid was this or that or this. Like, I can't believe that this happened. We never would have never known. You know, how do you connect with families of that have either lost, lost someone that they loved or um, maybe struggling? That's a great question. And um, we know it's really, really difficult because our young people are struggling. Um, it's never been easy to be a teenager, for example, you know, um, it's never been easy. It's always been a difficult time. And certainly nowadays, our young people are facing things and stressors that we never had to, that we, it's hard for us as adults to fully imagine because we've never been teenagers in this time, right? And, um, you know, there's, it's interesting because things like technology can be a double-edged sword because it can open up opportunities for connection and finding support and resources, but it also can exacerbate and add additional stress or feelings of, of isolation or maybe not belonging. And, um, or it can be a tool for, you know, people who want to use it against each other. Um, when it comes down to it is that we all have mental health, just like we all have physical health, right? And so we all have a baseline of what is normal or healthy or typical for each of us as individuals. And we're raised from a very young age to recognize um, when our physical health isn't where it needs to be, you know, we have a cold, we hurt ourselves, we have the flu, whatever it might be. Even something simple as being raised to brush your teeth as a prevention measure, right? We don't even think about it, right? After a certain age, you don't even have to remind your kids after a certain age to brush their teeth. Um, so imagine if we were taking care of our mental health in that same way, that it became just part of what we do and checking in on each other, not just on how you're feeling, how's your health, but making sure we mean also your mental health. And how's your stress? How are you managing, right? What are you doing to take care of yourself from a preventative standpoint? I think the more we can also give, um, you know, better tools as far as, you know, language to use for our kids to help them better express what they're going through. We limit kids, I think, sometimes is like, okay, are you happy or are you sad, right? Um, there's so much more to the human experience than those two words. And um, so the more we're able to help kids to be able to express how they're feeling, um, and to be validated in how they're feeling um, and not be dismissive of it um, and tell them, okay, we'll just stop crying or suck it up or get over it. These are messages we may not realize we're giving to kids. And um, by having these kind of conversations early, helping to build resiliency and helping to find healthy ways to express oneself, um, these are going to be strategies that can really help move forward and have um, a really healthy sense of your mental health. Um, and also too, to think about how are you role modeling mental health and stress management as adults? Because they're looking to us as the adults in their lives. And if they see you running yourself into the ground ragged um, or pushing aside things that you should be doing to take care, these are the lessons that they're learning. It's really hard to unlearn those once they're ingrained in our, in our habits. So um, we also have guides too on AFSP.org on how to talk with your kids in a way that feels more, you know, age and developmentally appropriate as well around mental health and specifically around suicide. Um, unfortunately, it's a scary topic. So a lot of times people, if they don't know what to do, they do nothing. Um, and kids can struggle no matter who they are, even if they seem that they have it all together, that they have, a, they come from a quote, good home and a supportive family, they may be struggling and all the more reason they don't want to scare you or burden you, right, with, with what they're going through. Um, so we do have a lot of guides on how you can talk and start to approach these conversations in a meaningful way. That is such a great resource because it is so very true. You know, just like addiction can happen to anyone, our best kids in, you know, white suburban, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's non-racial, it's non-socioeconomic uh, um, biased, you know, so it can, it can happen to any one of our kids at any time. And you're right, you know, it's why not address it instead of ignore it and having a resource like that that guides people guides parents is um is is a great resource and so for those that uh and, and for me personally i know kids we we as parents have actually intercepted suicide attempts even in alden where my kids go to school but you know there's pe pe people that i've known personally from you know the the local school districts where their kids have you know either attempted suicide or their cutters or you know, they, they've said these things like, I don't want to live anymore, you know? So 
having that preventative measure is is huge. But for those that have, you know, had the worst thing possibly happen to them and lost, you know, one of their kids or someone that they loved, what type of programs do you have that uh, they could reach out to right now? Absolutely. And, um, you know, certainly we, part of post prevention is what we call postvention and helping to break the cycle of suicide is how we respond and offer support to those impacted is part of the full prevention process. And in particular, I know working with youth, we have a lot of resources for schools in addition to postvention kind of toolkits and um, guides for if there is unfortunately a suicide loss in a school community. Um, it's a guide that, um, you know, for how you can address what kind of a plan as far as communications and what resources to, to offer, how to um, message and communicate in a, in a safe way that's less triggering or less activating for those young people who have been, you know, so impacted. Um, you know, how to work with a family of, of the student who maybe has lost their life. And so, um, you know, that's a particular tool even talking about for young people um, in particular. Um, and then we have a number of other programs that um, we have a peer-to-peer -peer program called Healing Conversations. Um, for those who have been impacted by suicide loss, they can be matched up by a trained volunteer who's had a similar relationship, but is further along in their own grief journey and can be a support. And we also have our annual uh, Survivor Day program too, which can will be virtual this year, so hopefully is more accessible to folks. Um, you know, but is another way that people can come together across the community. Um, you know, in 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 as a way to heal together. Um, so there's a number of our programs, and certainly you can visit afsp.org um, to see more of what we do, and especially what we can provide um, from prevention as well as um, for support from the loss and healing perspective. So oh, just to, you know, kind of recap your organization, you know, it started off as really a resource organization or research organization, you're evidence-based, you have evidence-based series. videos for people to learn, um, you know, about, uh, uh, you know, the, the prevention science of suicide. You also have things called, um, it's called research connection. You have healing conversations for those who have lost someone. You can get paired with a, uh, someone who also has gone through that and have those kind of conversations. You have a lot of different partners in the mental health space called NAMI. Um, and you're piloting a program more in the central New York called Finding Hope, which is more on the prevention um, side of you know, of suicide. So I want to thank you for everything you do for our community, for our area, for being an evidence-based, you know, type of organization so that it's proven, it's it's directed, it can be measured, and uh, for just keep pushing towards the advocacy on the support that we need to help save our kids and, and help save lives. So uh, to wrap up, Missy, where can people find you again, please? Absolutely. Um, if you go to afsp.org, O-R-G, slash Western NY, that'll bring you straight to our Western New York chapter. And it lists a number of our upcoming events and programs and has my direct contact information as well. And that way you can also check out the fuller AFSP website and all the various things we have going on as an organization. And Gwen, I wanna thank you too for focus and everything that you are all doing. Um, I'm excited to continue to grow our partnership because um, we're all in this together in terms of creating a healthier and safer environment for our kids. And so, um, so thanks for the opportunity as well. Thank you for taking this time. So we we care about our kids. We care about our families here in Lancaster, New York, and Depew, New York. And um, for anyone who wants to get involved, get a hold of Missy. You can. Uh, there's lots of different ways that you can get connected. If you need research, if you need help, please contact her. She'll be listed in the resource guide also as part of this um, as this event. So thanks to everybody for watching. And you know, if, if you need anything, please reach out. Thank you. Thank you.